tremendous inspiration. You know, just even today, you know, when I talk around and talk about the old days and people like that, and I mentioned Lucy Covington and, you know, the, uh, the eyes light up here, or, you know, the name is recognized. And uh, with such admiration. She represented a beautiful face of the American Indian. She had gorgeous braids, and yet she had these eyes that were piercing. I, I don't know if anybody can fight in the way that, that she did. I believe that um, we, have, um, we have many in, men and women in today's world that uh, are extraordinary in their ability to, uh, to take on the outside forces that are detrimental to their, to their tribe and to their nation. Part of that legacy as a granddaughter, a descendant, it's always been more so inspiring because I can take pieces of that and ultimately the entirety of, the, of everything that she's done and use that in my, my path and my purpose. She was such a person that uh, very much came from a traditional perspective. I mean, uh, you know, you could just see the way she carried herself and, you know, the way she spoke. You know, I don't know that she had a higher degree. I mean, uh, in fact, I don't know what her educational background was, but she was very uh, intelligent, you know, and very uh, good speaker. She knew how to carry an audience of tribal people. This is what I remember about her. She just, she was inspiring. I guess I would equate her to like the Queen of England. It was the kind of feeling I got when I was in her presence. She was very regal, you know, she wore her hair in that beautiful Indian style and she would wear her jewelry in, in such a beautiful way. And just her presence was immense so that you were delighted when she even looked at you and smiled and asked you to come and sit with her uh, because she was always with her friend or some other close friends. And uh, as a woman leader, the men, we had many chiefs uh, that were primarily men in those days and heads of uh, tribes, they would defer to her. They would wait on final decisions until they heard from Lucy because she came from a tribe that had faced termination and was facing termination even in those days. And Mel Tanaskett would be the one that would best answer those questions. But uh, she was so regal that uh, people were inclined to always come and see her and visit with her. And uh, she was <clears throat> uh, viewed this way also in Congress. Lucy could sit very quietly and instruct people to do this and do that and to go see this congressman, go see that senator and talk about this. She didn't just send them on missions of, of uh, you know, wide open uh, conversation. She would give them very specific instructions. She was living, walking hero, you know, among a lot of the people and uh, among younger people. Termination is something that no Indian should ever dream about. If Indian doesn't have land, he has nothing. That is home. And that's what God intended in the first place. So while I was in law school, I heard about the fight against termination that was waged by Lucy Covington. I mean, because she was, uh, an exceptional leader, and she, and she realized that the BIA was going around the Colville Reservation trying to persuade people to, to agree that they would put their land into private ownership. But Le Lucy campaigned almost single-handedly, the way I understood it, campaigned to persuade the people that termination was a terrible idea, you know, we don't want this, you know, we're going to vote against it, you know, in a referendum vote, and she succeeded. You know, it's just incredible, you know, tough, strong leader. 
that, you know, Lucy, uh, to me, has always been kind of a shining star in terms of the, the response of tribal leadership and how they got together as a group here, the affiliated tribes, and they formed this organization, the Affiliated Tribes of Northwest Indians, to fight against termination as a group. Well, watching her and winning that, that fight, I thought it was just uh, incredible at those, in those times. And those times were, 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 were terrible. If, it, if you could imagine uh, being on a reservation uh, with the state then, uh, and entities encroaching on your sovereignty. She knew what sovereignty was, and she stood up for it. A lot of the tribal members thought it was just a matter of ownership of land, that uh, this was all going to be bought from you and you'll be free with a whole bunch of money. And that wasn't it at all. You know, that that land base was so important that without that land base, you really didn't have a tribe anymore. And so that was, uh, you know, what, what I was, what I had learned from Helen and also from Lucy. And, uh, and that determination must be fought. It must be taken on. And Lucy was the one to do it, you know, to uh, go up there and uh, defeat the liquidationists and uh, take back the tribe and instill those values, you know, instill that knowledge, uh, uh, you know, of what that really meant to them. They worked well behind the scenes, not subversively or uh, covertly, but they did the work in the committees. You know, they were always down there with the resolutions committee and all of these committees, those are the caucus, or your caucuses and committees that make NCAI work. And there, were, there was an understanding among women on that. Okay. And uh, I always really appreciated it because that's where I met so many inspiring leaders and so many of them were women. <laughs> From this stance, she not only saved her own nation, she learned from the very edge of death, which is termination, she learned the value of fighting for your own tribe so strongly that you win. That's a real mark. And then she learned to take that victory, that management ability to a bigger world, and that's the American Indian uh, in its nations around the country. She influenced the making of great men. She was a woman that made great men, and they depended on her and used her and loved her for the strength she was to our nation's leaders. She was the backbone of what we have today. Um, I think it's really important to put Lucy Covington in context. We have had so many great leaders that we all know from the 19th century, but we don't know the great leaders of the 20th century the same way. And I think Lucy Covington is definitely in that group. Folks like Billy Frank, folks like um, Vine Deloria, um, Joe Delacruz, there's so many folks that really set a tone for what we're doing today. And um, I mean, Vine wrote that in every leader, every generation, there will be a Joseph Gary. And that's where Lucy fits in is this really important um, cadre of leadership. People like Lucy Covington, Alex Sherwood, Joe Delacruz, all these leaders who came and stood strong for the tribes and spoke for our people because they wanted us to still be here for, for 
for future generations and continue to be the tribal peoples that we are, the people that care so much about the environment, about our people, about being here, and, and knowing that we don't own the land, they're gifts to us, and we're here to take care of it. But one narrative that I don't think comes up nearly enough is excellence and folks who are either strategic or building economic development, who are doing things that the rest of the country could learn from. Um, the health system is another one that fits into that. Uh, people always see the negative without seeing what real successes have happened at the same time. I think uh, the youngsters are proud of being an Indian and want to learn what they have lost. Her dedication to education, she was on our board of directors for 10 years, but she was also the president for four years. So um, her commitment to tribal education is also very inspirational. Um, I love having um, strong Native women as um, an inspiration because even today, uh, there are a lot of Native women who uh, do the work you know, you keep your head down and you do the work, you work extra hard to, to make a difference and make a change. Um, but also she inspires me to use my voice. Yeah, it's something that has not always come naturally to me, um, but I know that that's important to do. So she's inspired me just by knowing um, the impact that she's had in Indian country and uh, the contributions that she's made politically and educationally. We just had a great time afterwards. <laughs> you know, she um, she was a gracious lady, and she was smart, and uh, she was full of fun, you know. And I think that's important. You can't be uh, being fighting all the time. You have to learn about your other people and take care of them. and. Uh, she promoted education because we had to do our fighting on the board. And then after it was over with, then we got along. You know, you don't uh, have grudges against anybody because you're disagreeing with them. And I think that's what's happening today. A lot of people uh, can't disagree with somebody. They forget about it, you know. They, they don't really, they don't forget about it. And then they're mad at you forever and ever. And uh, that's one of the things that sometimes, like I said, it's uh, your own um, people that give you a bad time. Reading about her and knowing the impact that she has made on this organization is so inspirational um, to know that she was she was an advocate at a time when being a Native woman in leadership wasn't necessarily accepted. And she placed herself in that environment and she used her voice, you know, um, watching videos about her and her strength and using her voice and how important that was does inspire me to use my voice. Sometimes we're the only Native person in the room and we have to use that voice. Well, I think learning about Lucy Covington as a Native student is important because she was one of the warriors for our tribal sovereignty. You know, we are federally recognized tribal nations and in order to stay sovereign, you have to fight for it because it's always been that way. So Lucy Covington is important and she brings light to native issues past and present, even though she's not here with us today. Her legacy lives on. I think God was good to us and made us Indians. I don't know if I was uh, chairman of the board at that time, but all of our board members went to Lucy's funeral. And uh, I wouldn't have missed it for anything, you know. So, you know, that's how Indians are. You know, you make sure that the ones that you really supposed to go to, you go and honor them. So, and then I think the day, it would, if, it, if that was the time when it was um, 
misting like it is today. It always says that's uh, a sign of even the heavens are crying for them. I think it's such an honor for one thing, you know, that uh, she deserved it. You know, maybe she didn't even say that, but, you know, um, you don't see many women um, being honored like that. And I was so happy that we they were finally recognizing the honor uh, and honor people like Lucy because she's known it for a lot of things, but I know that she's probably done 10 other things or 15 other things that nobody even knows about. I think if they look at the Colville Nation, it wouldn't be there without, uh, without her leadership. There wouldn't be um, there wouldn't be uh, Omax Stampede. There wouldn't be uh, there wouldn't be the tribal celebrations. There wouldn't be the salmon uh, uh, coming up the rivers again. There there just wouldn't wouldn't be there. They'd be um, it'd be uh, communities that, that were there if she if it wasn't for Lucy Covington. And she was still seen to this day as being a very beautiful woman uh, who was truly admired and respected because I go to those sing halls now and they recall upon her in a very favorable memory. And so I think she really left strong positive ripples. So, yeah, that's something that people should know about her. No, before, well, before we did this, you know, I watched the videos um, on Lucy and I think it's important to to see her face and to hear her voice and um, the things that I take away from, from what she said was really that we need to have a voice and that we need to fight to remain Indian. You know, hearing her say those things to me, um, or say those things, you know, um, that's, that stays with me and I feel that She's a part of this legacy, and it's an honor to be able to um, help carry that legacy forward. And listening to that, you know, I, I I'll keep that with me. You know, you know, to have my voice um, and to to remain Indian. You know, so to implement that in the work that I do in providing um, scholarship opportunities, educational opportunities, to to really remember that and to um, remember where where American Indian Graduate Center really received its kind of roots. Where are our roots? And it's, it's founded in that. So I'm going to carry that forward with me um, in the work that I do today. So this has been um, a beautiful project for me to be a part of because now I feel even more um, connected to Lucy and committed to carrying her vision forward. So thank you for, for that. And I think that's that's really what's most beautiful because they were they were setting all of us up in a good way like that, and that's ultimately what I want to do is set our children up in a similar light. Um, but that's that's what I understand about her from all of the people that I've met and their experiences or shared experiences. All of these stories correlate, and they all come to a similar conclusion that she was a woman of the people. She led this path of leadership, uh, not for herself, but to ultimately pave the way for the future generations. And it was for education, and it was for sovereignty, it was for the independence of our people, to establish a place within this world, uh, to ensure that we can continue to be a voice, whether that's a voice for nature or a voice for humanity.